Uh, he he retired, and ESPN has this long article about you know his decision and what went into it. And he said, "I thought we could have had a hell of a team next year. Maybe seventy or eighty percent of the players you talk to, though, they want to know two things: what assurances do I have that I'm going to play? Because they're all thinking about transferring. And the second question: how much are you going to pay me?" Saban said to myself, "Maybe this doesn't work anymore. The goals and aspirations are different, and it's all about how much money I can make as a college player. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's wrong. Just." That's not what we've been about. And it's not why we've had success over the years. So in part, that's why he stepped yeah. away. There's a lot of different reasons why coaches are stepping away. And we've talked a little bit about the fact that, especially some of the coaches, the, the old school, old mindset coaches, they're willing to say that, hey, you know, players making money, it's, it's not wrong. It's just different. And different doesn't have to be bad. It's just... Different can be just exactly what it is, different and hard for some to wrap their minds around, to adjust to, to get behind. And the other thing that he talked about was after they lost to Michigan in the Rose Bowl, the reaction of his players, and I think this was, there's a lot of different reasons why Coach Saban decided to retire. I mean, first of all, he's had a, a great career. He's old, mm -hmm. right? And he just wanted to, you know, step away and enjoy his life in a different manner, in a different way. But some of the things that pushed him in that direction or some of the things that you just talked about. Also, after the game, he saw you know players throwing their helmets, kicking chairs and throwing things in the locker room. Like, that's just not what he's been about. You can like or dislike him as a coach. I have, I have come to respect the hell out of him, his success, obviously, the way that he's built his program, and then getting to meet a lot of his players that have played for him over the course of his career. Jonathan Allen is a, a, a great mm -hmm. teammate, a great individual, a great player, but he's a guy that you would want to have in your locker room. And, and I'm, for, for those here locally who talk about the, the culture that Dan Campbell has tried to create in the locker room, he'd be a Dan Campbell guy. He would fit in to, to Dan Campbell's what he wants from a football player. Best college football coach of all time. Yeah. By all accounts, doing it the right way. I mean, there's always a little bit of scumminess in the SEC with recruiting, but that aside, it felt like he was always doing this with a determination and an obsessiveness and a competitiveness. A lot to like about Nick Saban. Having said all that, it's good that he stepped away because you do need different kinds of coaches for these players. This is a different era. I don't think there's anything wrong with a guy who says, I do want to know, what's my role on this team? What compensation am I going to get? Because these are the same questions that coaches have been asking for years. And now the players have a seat at the table. And certain coaches don't like that. And the response is, then get the hell out and let other coaches who do want to juggle that, who do want to have that relationship with the players. I'm not saying yeah. it's easy, but welcome to coaching today's athletes. Yeah, I mean, at every stop along the way, when a coach gets to, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't have to be a certain number, but if they've been coaching for a couple of decades, three decades, the the the, the student athlete, the athlete, the individuals are going to change. The world will change, and yeah, the the best coaches and and to his credit, he's changed along with it. Nick Saban has mm -hmm. he's changed along and modified who, how where he's recruiting, all of those different things. But there comes a point where you're like, I just can't, I, I can't get behind all of these different things. And some of it is when he talks about the reaction of the players after the game. And when he thinks back to different times that they've had disappointing losses and his players haven't acted that way. Okay, how is he doing something differently at Alabama coaching these players? Or is it simply the the athlete, the individual, the kids are different now than they were 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. Yeah, even five years ago. Yeah, I mean, this happens fast. He says there's nothing wrong with it. I, there, I, to me, there isn't. There's nothing wrong with the guy wondering about his spot in the depth chart and wondering about his, his compensation. I don't have an issue. I know that's going to bother the old guard, right? The old school football guy. I have no issue with that. There's, there's a lot of money being made in college football, and these are big decisions, and you only have a few years to really maximize your your athletic potential. And if you're going to sit on the pine for three years, you kind of want to know. Yeah. Coach, I mean, just, just and, and by the way, free up the scholarship for you. If, if I'm going to sit on the bench because you got a better guy ahead of me, and you don't see the upside for me in the next year or two getting on the field, 
use the scholarship on someone else who's got more eligibility and let me go pursue a different opportunity at a different school. And that that can be a possibility. Um, and I'm wondering, is some of the thing are some of the things that we're hearing from Nick Saban as to why he stepped away? Not just one thing, but a um, you know a hodgepodge of different things that forced him to ultimately pull the trigger and say, I am stepping away from coaching. We've got a lot of coaches that listen and are, are, are in this area that have been doing it, some of them for a year or two. Others have been doing this for decades. I would love to hear from them. How have you seen your athletes change over time? How have you had to adjust how you've connected with those athletes? And at some point, did you just throw your hands up and say, you know what, it's not wrong. And and maybe there is something that is wrong about. Some people do think there's something wrong. Yeah, that's fine. Call call and tell us. But how is it different? How have you adjusted? And when did you say enough was enough? Texture Costa's an idiot. These are amateurs, not professionals. Coaches and players aren't equal. When they are, you have chaos. Well, I think the line of them not being professionals was crossed. It has been crossed. They they are on some level semi professional. Some of the well, no, I mean, so you, you have to decide what you're calling professional. If you're you know being paid to play the game indirectly, though, and that's where you get into the gray right, area. Yeah. The school's if, not if cutting the check, if, but you're if, only if, there in some cases because someone footed the bill, right? If you're getting compensated because you're a really good athlete, does that make you a professional? Well, to an extent, they've always been compensated. Education and room and board and you know, yes, training table. And, there's, but now, there's but now, you're, getting, area, but but now yes. you're getting cash because you can't. when you go to the grocery store, you can't go, I'd like to exchange the scholarship for um, a, a bag of apples. <laughs> can't do that. Yeah. 248-539-9797. We are going to get into the Spartan win last night. Tom Izzo credits the Izzone. I'm with him. We'll get into the Red Wings this hour. A new nickname. I gave credit to the ticket texters. Apparently, Wojo is the originator of this new Red Wing nickname. Oh, okay. We'll mix that in this hour. It's 97.1. Hey, in an instant, an auto accident can put you in the worst financial position of your life. It is a must. 